The Duke of Norfolk joked that he'd have left the country had he made a mess of King Charles's coronation, which he organized as Earl Marshal. Now, he has his work cut out again for the wedding of his daughter, Lady Isabel Fitzalan Howard, who's got engaged to Donald McFarlane. We're both very excited, Lady Isabel, 29, tells me. We met at a mutual friend's party and are planning a winter wedding. McFarlane, 30, who proposed at Arundel Park in the South Downs, explains that the wedding will be in December 2024 to avoid its clashing with the wedding of Isabel's brother, Lord Philip, next summer. The couple, who work in finance, will tie the knot at Arundel Cathedral in West Sussex with the reception at the Duke's ancestral home, Arundel Castle. The Duke, Edward Norfolk, tells me, I am absolutely thrilled with Isabel's engagement to Donald. Modern manners. No greasy spoons for TV chef Rick Stein, who starts his day with the soothing strains of Franz Schubert. I'm very fond of a simple breakfast, just one egg, one rasher of streaky bacon, and I make an Italian-style tomato sauce. He says, I listen to Schubert every time, it's part of the ritual. I say, Alexa, play Franz Peter Schubert, and it always starts with Ave Maria. I put the tomato sauce on the egg and I'm in heaven. Foxes shares in GB News. Lawrence Fox, who was sacked as a GB News presenter for vulgar sexual remarks about political reporter Ava Evans, retains an interest in the beleaguered television channel. I hear the former star of hit ITV detective drama Lewis was handed 3,630 shares in All Perspective, the parent company of GB News. The shares were granted in April and held as at September 24, according to documents filed at company's house this week. Fellow presenter Dan Wooten, who was suspended for ignoring instructions relayed via his earpiece to stop Fox, owns a whopping 43,561 shares. The shares are currently not worth a row of beans. GB News lost 30.7 million pounds on 3.6 million pounds in sales last year, with the channel 33.6 million pounds in the red. How Daredevil Kirk fumbled film role. When he died age 78 a few days ago, David Kirk, founder of Oxford's Dangerous Sports Club, was pretty well penniless. Despite pioneering the bungee jumping craze by leaping from Clifton Suspension Bridge in 1979 while clutching a bottle of Bollinger, and also attempting to fly to Paris by microlight the following year, I heard a terrible rumpus, recalled Betty Whitty, when that bit ended in her Surrey garden, and then all I saw were these legs and job cores hanging out of my tree. Yet fame and fortune were once there for Kirk's taking after he met the late Monty Python star Graham Chapman. Chapman wrote a screenplay featuring the dangerous sports club, Oxford boxing legend Nick Stafford Dage tells me. All went well until Kirk, a man with old school views and a prodigious thirst, got drunk and sounded off about Chapman's boyfriend. And that was the end of the film. Heavy lifting for Sophie. Sophie Raworth has to do some heavy lifting in Hugh Edwards' extended absence from the BBC. And there's no respite for the newsreader off screen either. Raworth has shared a video of her lifting a barbell weight of 15 stone. I've done a decade of marathon running but virtually no strength training, always assuming that 30 to 40 miles a week of running was enough for my muscles, the journalist explains. But over the past few months, I keep hearing people talking about the need to lift heavy as you get older. Having just tipped into my 56th year, I decided to sign up for a six-week program. I'm curious to find out what it will do for my running. She adds, I'm rather enjoying the heavy lifting, too. Within a couple of weeks, my body has started changing, a different shape to my arms, leaner around my waist, quads that look defined. I feel strong.